him to him, that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those that brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them, for such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. Please repeat after me. Greater is he, Greater is he that is in me, that is in me than, he, than he that is in the world. I can do all things through Christ, through Christ which strengthens me. para hoy viene de Marcos capítulo 10 versículos 13 hasta el 16 y le traían niños para que los tocasen pero los discípulos los les reprendieron cuando Jesús vio esto se indignó y les dijo dejad que los niños vengan a mí no se los impidáis porque de los que son como estos es el reino de Dios en verdad os digo, quien quiera que no reciba el reino de Dios como un niño, de ninguna manera entrará en él. Y los tomó en sus brazos y los bendecía poniendo las manos sobre ellos. Por favor, repiten después de mí. Mayor es él que está en mí, que él está en el mundo, todo lo puedo en Cristo. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for blessing us all today. We know that you do everything for us. In our hearts, we praise you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Señor Padre Todopoderoso, gracias por un día más de vida, gracias por cuidar y proteger a todos nosotros hoy en este día, gracias por mandar a tu único Hijo para que pagara por nuestros pecados y nos diera vida eterna. Gracias por cuidarnos a donde quiera que vayamos, que haya más paz y amor en este mundo, que ya no haya más maldad, crueldad, tristeza, muerte y separación. Gracias por todo, en el nombre de Jesús. Amén. Selection called Hidden Treasure. This piece was composed by Walt Harrington. Listen as each part has different rhythm and techniques. This piece would end with Eden and myself playing fast 16 notes on a solo.
requires your heart being right with him if you're going to serve god you must serve him from the inside out now elena will lead us in singing inside out
time, Aurelia and I will sing the song called Up and Up by Colton Dixon. Mr. Dixon was inspired to uh, write this song because he said that life was tough. He believes that God wants the best for us. Even though life comes without trials, Mr. Dixon believes in God's plan to give us a hope and a future. And that plan always says up and up again. Even though I walk the vine, sometimes I feel like a crawl the vine. My eye got a crawl, crawl, now won't I fight you? Can't do my right beside you. Yeah, God, I know the plans you have for me, but my cup is overflowing. So I am in the end between. I'm a lover like no way. If I get down. Thank you all for being here and uh, for the invitation from uh, 
from Pastor Matthew Davis. Um, today is a wonderful day for me. First of all, because I'm with y'all here, this is a church that is very special in my heart. Not because the pastor made me preach in two languages at the same time, <laughs> but because you're very special people. Um, and with me today, we have four people with me coming. My sister and her husband, they're in the back, Lilia and the Savior, um, which um, she's, she's uh, with me this weekend. And then um, also with me is Reverend Al Robertson, Dr. Reverend Al Robertson and Teresa Johnson. Um, they are beautiful people. Um, and we work together, by the way. Uh, I opened an office, so I work as I, have, I work as an attorney at my office uh, near Galleria. So we opened first at the Heights, and then he did something that he told me, "Hey, Manny, I found uh, this place, and as soon as he sent me the pictures, my reply was, I hate you, <laughs> because." The place was uh, bigger. I didn't want to move from where I was, but it was bigger and cheaper and more parking and it was like great. So we're there. Um, so he, he's a private detective and he helps me with the criminal cases, we work at criminal cases, uh, personal injury cases, and I help other attorneys with their immigration um, court proceedings. Um, and today I, I want to I wanna talk about something that I think is interesting for all of us in the passage of the Bible verses that we're going to be touching is in Hebrews um, chapter 11 1 through 6 we receive a hi and a hello from St. Matthew Missionary Baptist Church I'm oh, sorry uh, Holman Street Baptist Church which is my pastor, where I worked there, I'm there one of the associates. So Matthew was my first church in Corpus. <laughs> um, so I would like to touch with you. And you you can praise the Lord. I, I, I don't mind, okay? I don't mind. You can praise the Lord. You can open. You can worship. You can do whatever you want. Because we're in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hebrews 11, 1 through 6, in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Now, faith is the substance. I'm reading a new King, a new King James Version. Um, you read in the version they all use. So, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good testimony. <laughs> by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, <coughs> And through it he being dead still speaks. By faith Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. And was not found because God has taken him. For before he was taken he had his tes this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you because you're in the middle of us this morning. Thank you because we know that you're going to speak to us in our hearts, and you're going to transform our mind and transform our lives. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. You may be seated. So today's message, the title is The Secret to Success. The Secret to Success. And 
we can say that action and reaction operates in the spiritual world. Believing, obeying, and acting will result in heavenly rewards. Rewards can be in the spiritual realm, realm and or can be here on earth. Procure him before all. Procure him before all. So how do we define success? And what is success for you? Is success getting married, having kids, graduating, obtaining a degree or a job or opening a business? Is it weight loss? <coughs> yeah, for me it's a bit of you know specific targeted weight loss or weight gain. Now marriage, but marriage with who? We're establishing goals, right? But marriage with who? What do we, who do we want to be that special person who we will share the rest of our lives? And study, or if you're gonna study, what level of degree? Or do you wanna go and just graduate? Or you wanna graduate with summa cum laude, with mana cum laude? Do you want a job, but what job you want? What position you want to obtain in that job? Do you want to grow up, be promoted, right? Do you want certain salary? Do you want wealth? What kind of wealth? So these are things that we usually want, right? And there's goals that we establish in our lives. You know, I want this girlfriend, I want this boyfriend, I want this uh, wife, I want this husband, I want this job, I want this position, I want this car. Do all, can we agree that all of us has in our lives goals? Amen. Amen. I, 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 I think I'm dead here. I'm dead here. I'm having problems here. Okay, so you know, Oxford Dictionary defines success like the accomplishment of an aim or purpose. There is a thin line between success and failure. Right. A person or thing that achieves desired aims or attains fame, wealth, etc. <coughs> overall, the fair example, etc. Um, example. Overall, the fair was a great success. Inside the success is something that you want to accomplish. Now, what does this have to do with faith? You know what makes an uh, inventor successful? Is that he failed 2,000 times. I always say, and I used to say that a lot to my, uh, to my other sister. I'm a genius. She would get so upset and mad with me. I'm a genius. But I never told her the, the, the rest of the, you know, of the sentence. It said, you know, genius failed like 2,000 times. I'm like 4,000, but I'm, I'm still there. <laughs> you know? But we have to persevere. A thing Amen. is that we have to persevere. So faith makes the things hoped for as real as we already have them. Yeah. Faith provides evidence that what is unseen is absolutely real. Yeah. Faith is the confidence in the worthiness and the ability of someone or something. Amen. Faith is setting your heart on the object of your hope and your confidence. Right. You, I, I, I need you to understand that there is an element, there's an emotional, there's a heart element, there's a faith element. Because when you establish a goal, it's because you think you can obtain it. Mm -hmm. That's right? right? That's right. <clears throat> because if you don't think you can obtain it, you won't have that goal. Right. Now the difference is, do we have the right mindset, mindset to continue? Yeah. Right. Right. To go through all the hurdles in life. To go through all the things that we have to go in order to succeed. 
when you talk with the most uh, successful people, all of them have failed. Not one, not two, but many, many times. But I want to put success in a biblical context. And at the same time, I want us to apply it to our personal life. Right? So, what is your object of faith? There is an adequate object of faith. Science, technology is not bad. False gods, money, security, wealth, other people, ourselves. Those are inadequate objects of faith. But you know what's an adequate, adequate object of faith? God. Amen. Amen. An adequate object of faith, say God. Okay, you're, you're waking up this morning. We're good, we're good. We have to have proper faith in God. Yes, sir. We have to believe that he exists. You know what? I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to make a confession. I don't believe in God by faith. Pastor Manny, what are you saying? I don't believe in God by faith. I know he exists. That may be faith, but it's that by logical conclusion, there's no way that I, and I've studied and I have my jury stuff, whatever. It doesn't matter. Logically, there's no way I don't have a crisis of my faith. And when I'm saying that, I don't have a crisis of, God, are you real? Do this or that. I don't have that problem because I know he's real. Amen. Amen. And sometimes we think of God like a magical formula and you they say this. And you talk this way, and you proclaim, and you manifest, and you do this, and we hear so many things today. It's like God is our service and our it's our slave. It's like He's our, our employee, and people don't care that God is God. He's eternal. He exists all the time, everywhere at the same time in all the dimensions. God is always God. Yeah. And people just think of this, it's like, okay, if I do this and I say this magical world of words, things is going to happen. Faith is good, misplaced faith can be a problem. Okay? So, we all exercise some kind of faith. In every day of our lives, right? Uh, but is our faith well placed? And where should we place our faith? And I think we already answered that question. When you go to the so when so this is discussion of verse one, verse two. I have a question. What what does faith have to do with good testimony? And verse two says, "For the elders obtain a good testimony." So, good testimony, and in the ESV version, says commendation, which means an award involving a special praise. So, good testimony is an award involving a special praise. The elders, our forefathers, receive good testimony. This is important. We're going, to have a, we're going to tie up to this later on this morning. So, can we see in the Bible a couple of examples of faith? You know, Hebrews 11 is a book that talks about the heroes of faith. You have to understand that these people that these Bible characters believe in Jesus before he was born. They believed in Jesus before they were Jesus was born. They had a faith of being saved by the Messiah 
when the Messiah wasn't still on earth. And we have trouble believing in the Messiah which died 2,000 and something years ago. Can you imagine that? Today, so still people ask, even the historical records, like they put in doubt the existence, the historical existence of Jesus. But these are the same people that think all the crazy stuff that we hear today in the social media. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. So, about those heroes of faith, we can talk about Abel. So, Abel and Cain, right? So, they both gave an offering to the Lord, right? God rejected Cain's offering, but accepted Abel's offering. Now, why that happened? Well, Hebrews 11, 4 says, Abel gave his offering to God by faith. It was a matter of the heart. Now, do you know that the heart, the heart has 40,000 neurons? We have neurons here, but we have the neurons in the heart. And there's a real connection. At first, like, the Bible talks about the heart, it talks about the heart, it talks about the feeling, it talks about this and, and all that stuff. And, and people, like, you know, suddenly, like a science, like, uh, <laughs> everything is up here, it's not here. Now, now, science can see that there is a connection, and there's a real connection between emotions and yeah. perception between yeah. the heart and the mind. So there's a connection between the heart and the mind, and this is important because this has to do with faith also. Because you believe in your heart, and you act upon that belief. And to act, you need to use your brain. Understand this, that God made you perfect. You will see yourself that you're not perfect. You may see yourself that you're not worthy. You may see yourself that you don't deserve nothing. But I can tell you one thing. You were born a winner. God chose you to be here this morning. God chose you to hear this message. Because God, God has a purpose. And when you understand that God has a purpose in all of us, you're going to have a more fruitful and victorious life. Amen. 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 Understand that God chose you. But God here chose Abel over Cain. Because Abel gave from the top. Because Abel believed in God. Because Abel wanted to have a relationship with God. And you know what's happening today is that we are neglecting our relationship with God. We have forgotten that faith has comes from the heart. And in the heart, we have love. We have forgotten to love ourselves. And we have forgotten in a way to love the Lord. We have forgotten to love ourselves, and in a way, we have forgotten to love the Lord. You know how many things we do that actually is not healthy and not beneficial for you? Beneficial? Okay, I'm not going to even talk about cornbread or things like that, you know, <laughs> which is so tasteful. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You know, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about, you know, fried pork or fried catfish. I'm not going to talk about those things. <laughs> that are, you know, because everything that's tasty, that's tasty is not necessarily good for you. Uh, because actually the things that taste better is the worst. I don't know why. <laughs> you know, shrimps, they taste good. You know, pork tastes good. Lobster, I love lobster. Seafood tastes good. That doesn't mean it's, it's, it's good for you. I'll tell us about that, brother. <laughs> That's the least of all, okay? <laughs> TJ is for your boy. So, no, she, she, she protects him. Like, yo, bro, like, 
Yeah. Don't eat that. Don't eat that. And the next time, try to take him to eat bad food. Uh, so, um, Abel had, had hope and confidence in God that he will take care of what came afterward. So what, what, can, what can we learn from Abel? Well, faith is a matter of the heart. We already said that. Cain knew God existed. Cain talked to God, but Cain didn't trust God. He knew God was, was there, but he didn't have any hope, any confidence, and any faith in God. Can somebody relate with that? Is it there times that you don't have hope and you don't have faith and you feel yourself lost? Are there times that you don't know what's going to happen next? Are there? there? We have those times. We are human beings. Okay? So I'm not going to come here and tell you, you sinner, son of daughter of the devil. Oh, you repent. No, because all of us go through this. That's human nature. That's why we have all these range. God gave us all these range of emotions that came from God. That's what we do with them, which can be the problem. Okay? So yeah, you can get you can get upset. There's nothing wrong with getting upset. Punch you somebody in the face, that's another problem. <laughs> Understand that. There's no problem in getting upset. It's punching a person in the face or reacting in a way instead of constructive being destructive. So he knew God was there, but he didn't have any hope, any confidence, and faith in God. He made an attempt at faith, but his heart wasn't in it. Abel knew that God existed, and his actions showed it. He was willing to place his faith and future in the hands of God. Your faith is a matter of your heart. You may believe that God exists, but he may not be the first in your life. Ouch. It happens. It happens. We are distracted. We are distracted with our family. We are distracted with our work. We are distracted with, with whatever we're, you know, we're distracted. It happens so many times. It's normal. It's normal. And sometimes we just have to shake it up. Go, go on. Let's wake up. You know. So, where is your hope? Where is your confidence and your faith at right now? Who or what are you trusting today and for the future? Is it in yourself? Is it in your own abilities? Is your life a testimony to faith in God? What, who has your heart today? When I was studying in college, it was I, I was preaching and preaching and preaching. I was the president and founder of a Christian fraternity and when I was doing my bachelor's degree. And, and I remember I was preaching and you know having crusades as an evangelist and doing a lot of stuff. And there was I didn't and then I was studying theology at the same time. Um, and doing many other things, and I remember like I was gonna have, I was gonna have a test. Um, I think it was economy or something, market. I don't remember what it was. Psychology of marketing, something like that. So half an hour before I I, I, I started studying and I started praying. God, you say to look at you first, and everything will come afterwards. I'm giving you my energy. I'm giving you my time. I'm giving you my life 100% because I want souls to come to Jesus Christ. God, you know where is my heart. I need you to open my eyes for this test. Everybody was studying. They already had, so I don't know how they got a copy of the test. <laughs> they had a copy of the test. And they were passing the test. And, they had went, and I was like, half an hour. I'm studying. I'm studying. Comes the test. I took the test. I passed the test. I believe it was with A. I literally saw the answers. Like, like this is the answer I would, I would like to mark. You know, the, the multiple choice? And they have this, like, you know, circles. I saw it darker, like gray. And I started marking those. I'm telling you, which is crazy. 
What happened is that everybody flunked. But after that, what happened was God really, it, this is, these are my students. These are the guys that, and, 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 the, and the ladies that I would be studying. You know, they're saying God is real because we saw you studying and you're the only one who passed the test. All right, all right. It was a testimony for them about the power of God. All right. Does this sound weird and strange? It does. People won't believe that. I don't care. <laughs> So one someday, uh, somebody one day told me you cheated. God help you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, hey, that's the problem. I trust him, you know. I trust him. So, Enoch. So when we read about Enoch, there's another hero of the faith, right? So when we, so we found that uh, uh, Enoch in just a few verses of Genesis, he's found, he's found in the human family tree. And he's fall between his father, Jared, and his son, Methuselah. Um, but he's unique for two particular reasons. First, he's described as a man, unlike any other in the passage, that walk with God. Can you imagine that? He walked with God. He had a special relationship with God. He's one of two men... They never die. Evil gives us a, a little more insight in, 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 into Enoch's life. Enoch went straight to heaven because he pleased God. But this happened by what? By faith. Enoch walked with God by faith. And he pleased God because of his faith. So what can we learn from Enoch? Faith affects our walk. Amen. Faith affects our walk. I'm going to tell you something. One day I was in a supermarket with an uncle who uh, he passed away. Called Tio Chaim. So we were in a supermarket. And where I come from when I was in Puerto Rico, uh, like, this is how a Christian dresses. So a Christian doesn't, if you're a preacher, you, you, you don't use a t-shirt. So I'm in a t-shirt with a lot of colors. Crazy. I don't know what, I had a lot of color. And then I had, you know, these jeans with, you know, I was, look crazy. For them, over there, if you look like that, you need Jesus in your heart. You need to, you need to come, you need to, you know, be a born again Christian. So I'm in a supermarket with, 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 my, with my uncle. And suddenly came this guy that I think he was uh, mentally unstable, but he started, he, he started and saying, you, you're Christians. You're son of the God. You're Christians. They started, and I'm like, how he knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't look like a Christian. But the Spirit gives testimony. Yeah. Amen. Okay? Amen. So your walk changes. The faith changes the way you walk. And doesn't matter if you're in shorts and you're in flip-flops. Right. Okay? Because God sees you, and in the spiritual world, even the angel sees you. Amen. Because God is looking for what? What we have in our heart. And our heart and our mind are connected. When we have faith in ourselves, it affects the way we live. We live for ourselves selfishly and are caring for others. Have you seen these people that are so self-centered? It doesn't matter who they destroy. Unless they get, you know, they want what they want, no matter the consequences. We we see that a lot, right? Uh, we are the object of our affection, and we will do anything to protect our affection. We are only hope, so we got got to do whatever it takes. There's some people that have misplaced faith. People who only have faith in themselves are cutthroats and backstabbers. Because everything depends on them and what they can do to survive. When we have absolute confidence, absolute hope in God, it will affect the way we live. When we trust in God of promises, we will live in a way to reach those promises. When we trust in the God of discipline and judgment, 
We will live in a way that keeps us from the, the, that discipline and judgment. We are able to live in a fallen world full of cutthroats and backstabbers because we trust in someone who is bigger and more powerful than them. We live as pilgrims. It's interesting, this, just passing through because our confidence and hope is that in this world, the things of this world, or the people of this world, yeah. our confidence and hope, our faith is in God. Amen. The heroes of faith live by, like, as pilgrims. Mm -hmm. They knew they had a purpose. Right. And we have, we talk about purpose on earth. But we forget the bigger picture. What is your eternal purpose? Yeah, yeah. And how is that eternal purpose compared to our span of life on earth? How do we waste our time? And how do we mess so much, mess up so much, when we can see that you and I have an eternal purpose. Say eternal purpose. Say eternal purpose. I didn't hear that. Yes, sister. Faith pleases God. God saw how Enoch lived. He saw how he walked in a sinful world. He saw that Enoch lived by faith in him. God knew Enoch's heart was torn towards him. God knew Enoch was trusting in him every step of the way, and that pleased God. Our dependence and confidence in God pleases him. He loves you, and he loves to see us living by faith and not by sight, which is very difficult. It, because we are trained to see things with our sight, but not with our soul and our spirit. We're trained to see what our eyes see, but it's different when you see it by faith. Yeah. Faith, when you believe what is invisible comes visible. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Understand this. Have you seen like all the things that we have imagined and then we have accomplished? Yeah. Let's, <clears throat> let's talk about x-ray. When you see the comic books, we were talking about x-rays and all that stuff. We have x-rays. We're talking about spaceship. We have spaceship. We're talking whatever the human being, being, uh, being imagines, we accomplish it. Right. Amen. Because God gave us this power in him. Amen. So if we do that and we can accomplish anything and we can make visible the invisible, what can we do for eternity? Amen. How can we prepare ourselves to be part of that kingdom right. and to serve him. Understand that God wants your mind and your soul Amen. to think bigger because God gave us the ability to have faith. And with faith, there is consequences. Faith is, it comes from the soul, it comes from the heart, yes. and it's a way of seeing things. Yes. It's believing in what is not there. Yes. When you <coughs> when you say that I'm gonna have a business, you're picturing already the exactly. you know you're picturing already the you know the the, the, cash, the, cash, the, cash, the cash. <laughs> right. When you say I'm gonna be an artist, you're already picturing all the Grammys and the Emmys and all this stuff, you know? When, you know, whatever you think, you're already picturing it. You're already picturing it, and you may fail, but if you continue, you may succeed. But, is that more important than your soul? I'm not saying not to look for that, but where is your faith? Where is your focus? Because God gave you that power. Amen. The biblical faith. Confidence in the worthiness. The true biblical faith is confidence in the worthiness and ability of God. 
setting your heart on God and knowing that that what has not yet happened is good as done in God. You establish your goals, you work for your goals, you conquer your goals, but put Jesus first. Amen. You know what? You know how we are saved? We are saved by faith. For by faith you have been saved through faith. For Sorry. For by grace you have been saved by faith. That's Ephesians 2.8. Therefore, therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5.1 We trust that God has done, we trust that God has done is sufficient in the person of Jesus Christ. And our confidence is in Jesus Christ. And sometimes, yeah, our, our, we are tested. Our faith is tested. Our confidence and worthiness and ability is in God. It's tested. Setting our heart solely on God is tested. Believing that what has not yet happened as good as done is tested. What, what do we need to know to face the testing of our faith? We need to know that the testing of our faith is going to happen. We have to expect that the testing, we have to expect the testing of our faith. <coughs> the Bible says when or whenever, not if. John 16, 33. I have said these things to you that in, in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Every time I hear this gospel. That, that because you're a king and a queen and nothing's going to happen and you just give me give me a, your seat in my ministry a thousand dollars and it doesn't matter if that's the only thousand dollars that you have and you don't have for the rent and you don't have for the car and you don't have for this seat and you're going to see him multiplying it but he's driving a Lambo <laughs> you know and what about you? Misplaced faith. But, <coughs> but the tribulation, it happens. There's no way around it. We are going to get sick. We are going to have accidents. We are going to face strategies. We are going to have hard times. We are going to face the hard times of life. Satan is going to fight against you. The world is going to fight against you. Our faith will be tested. Yeah. Our confidence in God will be tested. Our hearts will be tested. Yes. Our knowledge of God's promises for the future will be tested. We need to know that our values will determine our reactions to the testing of our faith. Yes. What we are made of comes out in the test of our faith. What are you made of? We have to be up to crazy. Actually, the craziness for other people who doesn't know the, the Lord, this is crazy. Being a Sunday in the morning at church is crazy. What the heck you're doing there? You should be at the beach or watching the car or, you know, low mowing. Well, pay somebody to do that. <laughs> you know, you know while he's doing it, you know, you're eating your burger and preparing the, you know, the refreshments. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or eating the, you know, cornbread. <laughs> I love cornbread. <laughs> so, you know, Amen. this is craziness. Being a morning at church with a wonderful weather. People can't under, but you have to be a bit crazy. You have to be a bit crazy to believe in what's not there, it's there. And that craziness we need in our daily life. And we need that so our souls can be redeemed. Believe in the, in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ in the Calvary. That he died and he resurrected. And he redeem us. God made that possible so we can be here today. 
And he allowed the tests for the, a reason. He allows them and so that we can see we can see just where our faith is at. You know what? Sometimes we're tested and we and we see like, ooh, this faith of mine has this trouble in here. I have a problem. Houston, I have a problem. And you know, and it, it's good to be tested. We don't like it. Right? Right. <laughs> I don't think anyone likes to be tested, but it's part of it's part of what we need to be better human beings, to be better Christians, to be, you know, to be better in our life, but to better other people's life. You know, God wants us to lead people to His kingdom. And do you think that's an easy job? You know, you have to deny yourself. And that's hard yeah. when you're teaching not to deny yourself, but to obtain all the pleasures you can. Our society is conditioning us as a society, and the church is reflecting that condition. Because the church is conformed of members of the community. And it's difficult to reteach and to tell people this eternal truth that looks so simple, but they're so impactful. Our lives needs to be changed, and we want to have success. And these people trusted God first. And incredible things happen. You know what? Abel died, but the Bible says that his Blood, the, the earth was green. Understand that? After death, he still speaks to us. That's the power of faith. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Not that he was killed, okay? Not that part. It's the part of the power. Can you imagine you being, you know, taken off of it, not dying? Because you're, as a human being, in the presence of the Almighty. Imagine that relationship. Faith is loving God. That's all it is. I am not a perfect human being. I don't think. I, I just trust, trust in His grace. True, I get upset. And sometimes I react not as a man of God. Okay. And I think all of us has our flaws. Yeah. Yeah. But that thing, my love for God is yeah. so big. Yeah. And I just worship him and I tell him I love you, God. Yeah. And I want to understand your heart. I want to know your dreams. I want to know God's dreams. And I know like when I'm walking, like not, it, I have a law firm right now. I started a, a, pra, a law practice. The funny part is like, like two years ago, maybe, no. Yeah, like two years, maybe or three years. Like three years ago, I received a prophecy. This prophet said that you're gonna have, you know, no, no, you know, I'm in the United States, blah, 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 here, whatever. And I rebuked him in the name of Jesus in my head. <laughs> no, I don't, I had one of the bad, I don't want to go with the admin part, I just hate it. And at that time, I didn't have my Texas part. Literally, life, life, and Al has a bit to do with this. We open the office together. Uh, just took me, and then when I had my law firm, I said, God, you know I didn't want this, right? I didn't want it, but God me, I don't know what he did, but I, I couldn't get a job. I was looking for a job with all the, you know, my, my experience. I couldn't get a job anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. I couldn't get a job. Well prepared with a lot of, before that, before that, like, I got offers, like, hey, fighting people for me. Suddenly, I can't get a job. More than, I went like over 39 interviews. But God had a purpose and he had a word. 
And then I was, I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. You know I didn't want it. <laughs> but I'm obeying you. I had to obey you. It's not what we want. It's what, what he wants in you. Um, I'm going to be, I don't know how long I've been here talking, so I think I need to start cutting. Um, I need to start cutting. So let me go through here. So what is the secret to success? Understanding the role of faith. Is what, is what the uh, verse 6 says. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For who? For he who comes to God must believe that he is. And that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek, he, seek him. Those who diligently seek him. A reward. You will receive a reward when you seek him. The secret of success is, uh, is having faith. But when I do something, I put God first. Amen. And when I forget to put God first, things doesn't stop working. Right. Stop working. I'm going to tell you honest. Yes. Like, if not, even the best, it doesn't matter. I've lost family because what? Because I didn't put God first. The ministry and God is not the same thing. I'm going to tell you that. I put the ministry first. And you know what? I was doing admin stuff. But atheists can do the same thing. Yeah. You don't need to be saved <laughs> to do admin stuff in a church. Yeah. But then my, my, my quarter, that spiritual relationship, that prayer, that relationship, I started like neglecting it. And it had a cost. And when I'm like working in my business, when I put God in second place, Thing doesn't work well. Because that's the secret of success. We need to please Him. How can you please the Lord? Living by His rules. Believing in Him. In your heart. In, in this brain. In the little brain. And in the big brain. Knowing that He's a rewarder. And you will receive. Like. The secret of success is that we have seen here in the U.S. businesses, there are Christian businesses, multi-million dollar businesses, and, and you hear them talking, God has been person in, in, in their business. I had good grades when I was in God. I was preaching all the time. My grades came because I put God, and, I, yeah, and yes, we have a natural thing, you know, intelligence and whatever, but you can be an intelligent doesn't mean that if you don't study, you're going to pass it. You know what I mean? And God made a lot of things possible. You know, we have secret to success, believing in him. Amen. Believing in his word. Believing he will reward you. Believing he will reward you because you're diligently seeking him. God has to be first in your life. God has to be first in your marriage. God had to be first in your family. God had to be first in your job. Yeah. God had to be first in your business. God had to be first in your career. God has to be first in your studies. God has to be first in your ministry. And God has to be first in your heart. Amen. Action and reaction operates in the spiritual yeah. world. Believing, obeying, and acting will result in heavenly rewards. Yeah. Rewards can be in the spiritual realm. realm and or it can be in here on earth. There is power in, belief, in believing, and there is success in believing, but always, always put God first. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. So, I will invite you to stand up. Please stand up, please stand up. So, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for everything. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your love. Thank you for talking to our hearts, our spirits, and our soul. If you're not a member of a church and you believe that NBC can be your your, your home church, this is the time. 
I invite you. Uh, you can pass to the front or just raise your hand and the deacons will help you. If you need to renew your faith, you know, because we get into it. And we get into it even with ourselves. If you need to renew yourself, you renew your faith. The faith. This is an amazing and good church. But also, if you want to give your heart to Christ, this is the best time. And for those that are, are watching us, be on them. Right, right, right. And we will pray for you. We want you to be saved. We want you to be transformed. We want you to be successful. And what we want God to work miracles in your life, in your marriage, in your business, in your studies, in your everyday walk. Father, thank you. Thank you for my brothers and my sisters. And thank you for your word. Thank you, God, because your love is enduring and is forever. Thank you because you gave us Jesus Christ and saved us and redeemed us. And sometimes we forget to be grateful, God, but today we thank you. Thank you, God, because we know that we will receive our reward in heaven. Give us strength to keep fighting the good fight. Give us strength so we can endure we can all be up in heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 It's offering time. <laughs> it's time to offer to give our our, our, our you know our offering and tithes um, for those of you that are hearing us and want to cooperate with this church. It's an amazing church. It's a good place. Um, you can sell to lifting.jesus at yahoo.com um, you can also um, you can also write to us P.O. Box 503 Missouri City Texas 77459 and I have you have a right you stand up and go you have a system here for the operating the local church knows so let's do it
with your morning announcements. June birthdays. June birthday this month is Andrew Johnson on the 1st, Michael Irvin on the 8th, Ruler Richard on the 10th, Carolyn Davis on the 15th, Dan Pink Long on the 17th, Anna Garza on the 18th, Sophia Gavin on the 19th, Blanca Gavin on the 24th, and Jonathan Servant on the 26th. Music classes at NBC. Music classes are offered on Friday nights from 5 o'clock and 8 o'clock p.m. and on Sunday mornings at 8 o'clock a.m. Please see Sister Carolyn for more information. Bible listening and journaling for 2024. We are listening to the New Testament and studying our weekly Sunday school lessons. Tomorrow we start week 26, Romans 9, 13. Please continue to listen and study God's word. Turning Hearts Summer Enrichment Camp will be July 15 to 19 from 7.30 a.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. Please join Sister Davis in prayer for the success of the camp. The cost is $100 per child. The deadline is Friday, June 28, 2024. Limit to 30 students only. We will have their scholarship and award luncheon on Saturday, June 9th. June 29th at 11.30 a.m. Our very own graduate, Hazelyn Carter, will be one of the recipients to receive a scholarship for college. Amen. The scholarship runs, <laughs> the scholarship luncheon will be held at Greater Mount Zion Church Event Center, 6 Force 37 FM 521 Road, Brazoria, Texas, 77422. The Turner Arts Music Ensemble will perform at the luncheon. Please, please support Hazelyn and our youth performers. If you are available to attend the luncheon, performers, parents, as well as NBC members, please let us and Sister Davis know today. We will celebrate all graduates from pre-K to college on Sunday, June 30th. During the morning service, each graduate should submit his, her name, photo graduating school and future plans to Sister Carolyn Davis today, June 23rd. Please remember those on our prayer list. Patrice Caskey, Walton Bean, Alvin Powell, The Lee Scales Apartment, Cora Woods, Angela Presley, Larry Woods, Lula Richard, Marlene Studebent, Tommy Hemingway Jr., Herman Gullery, Nathan Garrett, Chad Warner, Beverly Wallace, Terry Lewis, Doris Bridgeport, Brandon Turner, Maria Carey Spencer, Malari Williams, Kevin and Katrina Woodlock, Vivian Aslaha, Paul Hornsby, Paul Hornsby, Ed Brandon and family, Jacqueline Torres, Raymond Alfred Jr., Al Brinson, Terrence Miller, Labors for the Harvest and World Peace. Thank you. So it's turning um, heart ministry, you guys. We're going to cool them also in this prayer. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. You have heard the names of everyone. God, you know what they need. Some of them needs encouragement. Some of them needs faith, health, jobs. Some of them are a point of contact for other people. Some of them just need the covering. I don't know what they all need, my Lord, but you do know. And I believe that God is still and that you are still a God of miracles. And I, you, I know that by the blood of Jesus Christ, you still heal today. And I know that you still hear the prayers of your children. So God, we intercede and we ask for all these beloved. Bless them with overwhelming blessings with overflowing blessings. 
heal, supply, perform miracles, my Lord. Attend their needs. Because I know, God, that you're still alive. And I know that you still perform today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen to the Lord. Amen. So we are about to be dismissed. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and let's sing happy birthday to everybody. Yes. In the month of June. So if you are born in the month of June, please stand up. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen. Amen. Everybody.